So the fur is flying over Foxconn in Wisconsin and border wall negotiations in Washington. Never a dull moment. In tonight's Capital Insight, we are joined by Republican lobbyists Bill McCoshin and Scott Ross, executive director of the liberal advocacy group One Wisconsin Now. Thanks for being here, you guys. Thanks for Thank having you. us. I should say today is your last day as executive director of One Wisconsin Now. Have you just had it up to here with politics and division or what? Well, I figured, you know, uh, we've got a Democratic governor, a Democratic attorney general, and uh, we just beat Robin in federal court twice on two successive days. So I'm George Costanza. I'm going out on a high note. All right. Well, let's move along to Foxconn. The latest is that Foxconn got with or heard from President Trump, and now they're back in business in Wisconsin. Donald Trump even tweeting uh, this afternoon, great news on Foxconn in Wisconsin after my conversation with Terry Goh. So what is going on? Well, that's a great question. How did we get to this point? I, I mean, if you look at the public relations effort by Foxconn over the course of the last four days, what they were saying in Asia versus what they were saying here were totally different. And those two things couldn't coexist. So I don't know if it was a cultural uh, issue or they didn't quite understand the nuances of public relations here in the U.S., but I would say Foxconn got an F for public relations this week. Having said that, I would say Donald Trump resurrected this thing. And, and I know Scott agrees with me on this. <laughs> All this guy does is win, right? <laughs> yeah, but what did he do? I mean, you know, are these uh, threats or promises or? I, I, you know, I, I, find it, um, I find it not surprising that a four and a half billion dollar deal written on a cocktail napkin by a 25 year career politician in the midst of the most, you know, of the campaign that would end, and end, end up with him losing would be a deal that's just utterly and completely ridiculous. I think the really th the thing that I that's not being talked about with this deal is the fact that we cannot forget Robin Voss, the Speaker of the Assembly, who this project is in his backyard rewrote the law so that Foxconn would have even more uh, more of, a, of an open window controlled by Robin Voss. And I want to know if Robin Voss knew that this was going down before it went down. If he didn't know, that's even worse. Meanwhile, Robin Voss and Scott Fitzgerald are blaming Tony Evers <laughs> for whatever has happened this week with uh, Foxconn. What do you think of that? I think that the Asian story was that Foxconn themselves were blaming the change of administrations, that they had some uh, conversations with the Evers administrations, which may or may not have happened. That's unclear whether or not they did. WEDC said that did not happen. It, right. You know, it's, I mean, it's ridiculous. Listen, Robin Voss and the Republicans voted for this deal. Robin Voss and the Republicans around the state need to be answering questions about this. And no, I don't care where you're at in Wisconsin. You've got a Republican rep nearby who voted for this or a Republican senator who voted this. You need to ask them, what is the deal here? Because we're not talking about like, you know, Scott Walker said no credits, no job, no jobs, no taxes. We've already spent $1.3 billion in tax money on this. You know, they didn't meet their first requirement. It's an environmental disaster. They get to go right to the Supreme Court. They've done everything, rigged everything. And what concerns me is that now that the, now that the door's open to this, the Republicans are going to try and give them everything they want so desperately that something will happen out of Fox. I'd, I'd be careful about being too quick to place blame here. This was a bipartisan deal. Uh, uh, Tony Evers... Uh, Revenue Secretary Peter Barker was one that voted right. for this. Corey Mason, the new mayor of Racine, voted for this. He's a Democrat. Uh, this was a bipartisan deal. It may not have been a lot of Democrats, but it was bipartisan. And oh, by the way, if this fails, it's failing on Tony Evers' watch. That's so this right. is the, yeah, I mean, critically yeah, important yeah, see, that's for the him thing, right? yeah. that this succeeds. So how do you see it playing out? I mean, I think that, you know, I think that Governor Evers has a lot of cards at his disposal. We've got the state budget coming up. Hopefully there will be some additional accountability measures put in this. But, you know, the fact is, is that right now, if it goes as is, this is disaster because we're not getting what we wanted. I mean, you know, LCD versus OLED technology, you know, when it comes to what the screens they were going to mm -hmm. produce, everybody knew that. OLED is the next the next the next phase. We're back to LCD. Yeah. And, I, yeah, and I'll tell you, I mean, I'll just tell you. If a fat guy tells you where to eat and what TV to get, you listen to him. I'm telling you that LED <laughs> was the technology we're going to depend you on. You are on fire on your last day. <laughs> Donald Let's Trump has put himself at the center of this. He's decided, I'm going to take ownership of this thing. It's a critical to my yeah, re-election yeah, in the state of yeah. Wisconsin. Remember, he's the first guy Republican to win Wisconsin since 1984. So he's now fully vested in this thing. So I feel pretty good about our where we're heading in the future. Speaking of fully vested and Donald Trump, it looks like we are hurtling headlong into another shutdown because he says build the wall and Nancy Pelosi says no money for the wall 
I guess we should have expected this? It's sad. It's what people hate about Washington. I mean, there's a, an easy agreement to be had here that includes more immigration reform. Uh, neither side is willing to find that middle ground. They're both on the polar extremes, and it's, it, it's really sad. And I, I think he will call a national emergency and go ahead and build the wall. Months ago, there was a deal, basically. They got some wall funding, and we got DACA. And Stephen Miller went to Trump in his, you know, Klansman Dobby way and said, no, nope, can't have this. So now we're in a shutdown. The thing about it is Trump's had, what, three failed casinos. He should realize the House always wins. <laughs> That's tough to top. <laughs> <laughs> we're both it's his last stunned. day. He came on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Who does that hurt politically, though, more, do you think? A shutdown, another shutdown. I mean, you know, in Wisconsin, apparently, uh, the Marquette poll respondents say it, it was all Trump's fault the last time. He's yeah, always going to the face. I mean, it, he'll it, always it hurt the him face. more, for sure. And, and what do you make of those poll numbers um, from Charles Franklin that say that 53% of those polled say that Scott Walker should not run uh, for governor again? Why are they only 53%? Um, I think that what it is, it shows that people are tired of Scott Walker. They wanted a change. That's why they voted for Tony Evers. You know, and the fact that Scott Walker continues to tweet and tweet and tweet like he's hanging out in the parking lot waiting for, you know, the rest of the kids that he grew, went to high school with to come out, you know, and hang out with him is just, it's sad. He needs to, he needs to walk away. At some point in time, you need to walk away from things. It's a good indication to Governor Walker that he should go dark for a while. His legacy will grow over time with darkness, not with constant visibility. That right. would be my advice. All right. Bill McCaution, Scott Burles, thanks very much. Thank thanks you. So good luck. Thank to you. See you man.